Tall Tale TV. Of Monsters and Mushrooms by Leslie Heron. Chapter 15 Cortinarius. Stick! Attila repeated, dragging the word along as he flourished a large stick between two hands. He spun it against his palms, exaggerating his emphasis. Eric rolled his eyes. This was the fourth? No, fifth item Attila had plucked off the ground in a vain attempt to reteach his friend English. Eric opened his mouth to retort, but the giant leaf he had been pushing against gave way and he toppled into the brush. He grumbled around a mouthful of dirt and snatched up his glasses from a tiny stagnant puddle. He grimaced as he got to his feet, looking down at his filthy and incredibly smelly spectacles. Two long days had passed since they were ejected from the portal, and regretfully, they were lost. His pride wouldn't allow him to convey this to his comrades, but he was sure they knew. There were no signs of intelligent life. They were low on provisions and down two members. All in all, Eric was amazed his patience had lasted this long. Brig pondered Attila's display for a moment, nodding in turn. He tapped a finger against his massive chin thoughtfully, before he pointed at the stick and responded with, Nail joy. He offered his friend a large, white smile, awaiting his approval. Attila deflated a little. Even the sides of his hat drooped. Come on, Brig, this is an easy one. Stick! He paused, moving the stick from one hand to the other. Stick! Eric wiped the front of his glasses against his shirt, shoved them back on his face, and whirled around. Will you? He started, reaching over and ripping the stick from Attila's hand before heaving it into a nearby thicket. Give it a rest already? Had he not been in such a sour mood, Eric knew he would have been able to marvel at the wonder of the rainforest they were currently lost in. They were surrounded by numerous plants and vegetation, the like of which Eric had never seen before. Leaves on the trees and brush were massive, the smallest ones the size of dinner plates. The largest took all three of them to heave out of the way. Rays of sunlight pierced through the canopy in periodic locations, creating an eerie illuminated glow and revealing, more often than not, some animal denizen of the forest. The forest floor and many of the trees were blanketed in a thick green nettle moss. It was stiff and brittle and crunched when they walked over it. More than once, they had to avoid a group of bees the size of cats as they traveled between the massive flowers. Worst of all, the realm was bathed in a constant light from two suns. When one would set, the other would rise, bringing with it an ever-present daylight, and also an unwavering, sweltering heat. None of this, however, seemed to put a damper on Attila's spirits. That is, until he watched his stick disappear behind a giant dandelion-like weed. He took his flower hat off and slumped as he scratched his head. Sorry, I just... I told you, how many times? The mushrooms will wear off. Eric pushed his fingers into a throbbing point on his temple. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, Brig commented offhandedly as he plopped a massive hand on Attila's shoulder. Immediately rejuvenated, Attila jumped to his feet. <laughs> hey! He rejoiced, flinging his flower hat into the air. I knew you could do it, buddy. Briggs' eyes lit up as he realized he had successfully communicated something. Season lift, he explained, clapping his friend hard on the back. Well, we'll keep trying, Brig. Attila assured, lurching forward a step. He began scouring the ground for his flower hat when he noticed it flying away on the back of a giant insect. He let out an indignant huff and wrenched a massive leaf from the dandelion weed. He put it on his head, nodded to himself for a moment, before he whipped it off and began dancing around frantically. Aphids, except they're the size of spiders. Interesting, Eric noted.
pushing his glasses up on his face to get a better look at one of the giant bugs, as Attila screamed in panic, pulling off his poncho and dropping into the dirt. It took them a few minutes to extricate the aphids and calm him down. Attila had reclaimed his composure and found a hollow bark button. He plopped it on his head, accepting of its fez-like appearance. So, he said after a while, what are we doing? Eric blinked at him. What do you mean, what are we doing? We're trying to put some distance between us and that gate, he replied, his hands gesturing violently upwards. An action he regretted instantly as a parakeet-sized mosquito latched onto it. He slapped away the monstrosity before adding, We're also trying to find some civilization. We need a new gate or a way back through that one. He dodged a second mosquito, and then a third. Maybe even some bug repellent. Attila nodded, offering Brig a piece of bark to wear in a similar fashion. Oh no, I, I get that. I was just wondering, why... Why we aren't going after your brother? Shouldn't you be more worried about him? Brig took the piece of bark, giving Attila a quizzical look. Glib trotter? Attila nodded encouragingly. Brig shrugged, sniffed it, and bit into it with an animal-like ferocity. If he wants to wander off into the forest on his own, that's his problem. We don't need him anyway. Eric snorted bitterly. Briggs spat out the chunk of bark he'd been chewing on, pulling a face as he scraped bits from his tongue. He yanked Attila's hat off and broke it out of spite. Attila shot a look of near loathing at his friend before returning his attention to their party leader. Okay, but... No, we're not going back for him. He can find his own way out. Eric turned, yanking a giant leaf out of his path, thankful this one was bug-free. They trudged along a steep embankment, swarming with biting insects and perilous footing. Attila went through several different hats before finally settling on the nutcap of a giant acorn-like seed, proclaiming to Brig that it made him look like a Frenchman. It was nearing midday, or midnight, depending on how you viewed it, when the path opened up to the bank of a large river. It made up for its incredibly swift waters with lots of jagged rocks. Eric swore. Attila kicked a rock in. It disappeared into the rapids in a flash. So, what's with you and your brother anyway? He tossed in a stick. Eric scanned their path for a moment, before deciding that following the river was still the best way to find civilization. He started off downstream, hoping this way would have less perils than uphill. I'd really rather not get into that right now. Well, I think you should, because right now, it just feels like your temper is getting us more and more lost. Maybe if you let off some steam, you can figure out a better plan to get us home. Attila said with stolen wisdom, as he flung a giant leaf into the waters, watching it sail away like a tiny boat being torn to shreds. Home, huh? That's really where it all started, I suppose. Eric relented with a sigh. My brother and I aren't really from your world. We're... Wait, what? Attila interrupted, his nutcap hat almost dislodged from its perch as he dropped the giant flower he was hauling over to the river. Does that make you an alien? Eric couldn't help his mouth from falling ajar. I mean, technically, sure. But if you're expecting green skin and invasive medical procedures, Sorry to disappoint. Attila nodded slowly, but eyed him nevertheless. That does explain the pointy ears. Anyway, Eric began, plucking a leaf from a vibrant orange bush. My family was never very big on feelings. My dad was a scientist, worked long hours, and left when I was young to go save the world or something. More than likely, he was just escaping our stern and iron-willed mother. If she had a maternal side, she hid it fairly deep. So me and Vel pretty much raised each other while avoiding her and her overbearing and aggressive demeanor. She wanted complete and total control. We just wanted a family. Briggs sniffed a little from behind them, but played it off as a reaction to flower pollen when they turned to look at him. Eric smiled slightly. 
But, uh, one day a rift appeared in our world, and like your realm, we were hesitant of it. Almost a year went by and nothing happened. Many ventured through the gate, setting off to explore. A few returned to report another plane of existence beyond it. A prime opportunity for me, I thought. So, in the middle of the night, packed up some of my things and headed out to the gate. Eric let out a heavy sigh and flung the leaf away from him as they pressed farther downstream. I don't know if it was because he didn't trust me or wanted to control my life, but my brother was there, at the gate, waiting for me. I couldn't persuade him to go back home, so he came with. We fought, a lot, usually about going home, but I had decided there was nothing left for me back there, so I wanted to keep traveling, and he always stayed with me. I don't know if Mother told him to watch over me, or he just figured it would be fun to boss me around in seventy different worlds. The river curved around a bend, and a dense gathering of thick vines descended from the canopy above. Eric tugged at one, gauging whether it might bear his weight to swing across the rapids. The portals were more common in those realms, you see, and we never had to worry about making it back. They all worked like doorways, until eventually we landed in your world. We found things about your cities and habits that fascinated us, and we immersed ourselves in that realm, became just another inhabitant. Attila attempted to climb one of the vines, but his lack of upper body strength reared its ugly head. And you've been there ever since? Uh, not quite. We got caught up in the fire, remember? And, well, that was that. After saving his life, Vel demanded we go home. I conceded, since his injuries were a result of him following me. But when we tried to leave, there was only the one gate, and it led to the other world. We had come through it from one place, and when we tried to return the way we came, we were thrust into that desert of bugs and unseen instead. We managed to eventually escape, but there was no returning to our world. So what you're saying is that you're pouting because you have an overprotective brother? Attila clarified. Vine, Briggs said. Pouting? Eric asked, looking up in mild surprise. Sounds to me like you should just get over it, Attila said with a touch of ice. He straightened up and slapped Brig on the shoulder. He and I have been through some really hard times together, and boy did we fight. I always won, though. But that's not important. What is, however, is that in the end, I've always got someone to travel with. And so do you. So how about we turn around and go find your brother? Eric pulled a face at Attila's pep talk. And where exactly do you propose we start? Vine, Brig repeated a little more urgently. Exactly, buddy. I am always right, Attila chuckled, nodding his head as he did. Brig let out an exasperated sigh, grabbed Attila by the shoulders, hard, and spun him around. Vine, he said, jabbing his finger in the direction of the river. Before any of them could react, the vines that hung about the water's edge surged forward with sentient ferocity. The thick ropes constricted around each of them, slowly hauling them upwards. The more they fought, the tighter their coils became. What a time for you to start using proper words again, Brig! Attila cried out as he struggled with the bindings around his arm. Brig was being pulled up by no less than seven massive vines. Each time he'd snap one in half, two more would appear to restrain him. He kept at it until he resembled a ball of yarn completely covered and immobilized. Stop! You're making it worse! Eric cried out as he dug his fingers into the tendril around his neck. He looked up to see exactly where they were being ushered off to. Nestled in the heart of the tree, in an almost parasitic fashion, was a giant flower. Its petals were flashing between bright orange and dangerous red, and ended in wicked-looking black spines. They twisted around the bell of the plant before finally opening to reveal a monstrous, fanged mouth. Oh, good! Eric shouted in panic, his fingers now scrabbling to undo his bindings. If it's not the damn bugs trying to eat you, it's the plants! I hate this place! Relax, I've got this! 
Before Eric could stop him, Attila had his microtorch pulled from his pocket and was attempting to light his vines on fire. A horrible, shrill screech rent the air around them, scattering thousands of winged creatures from the canopy. The plant writhed in agony, the colors on its petals flashing more rapidly. Fire licked its way up each vine, jumping from tentacle to tentacle and finally latching onto their clothing. Fire! Briggs shouted. He had managed to gnaw a small space out of his net of vines in time to see that they were being enveloped by flames. Attila! Bad! Oh, hey! He speaks! Attila cried out, clearly unfazed by the fire working its way up his pant leg. It seemed that, despite their varied efforts, nothing was slowing this creature down. It was set on eating them, and would do so whether it burned to death or not. Eric gave up trying to free himself, and focused on the maw above him. His eyes landed on the nutcap atop Attila's head, and an idea sprang to mind. Attila, I need your hat, he ordered, straining to reach the merc. What? No! It took forever to find one I like. Just fork it over, Eric demanded again, his fingertips almost able to reach the stem. Attila sighed and removed the nutcap from his head. With a heavy, sullen look, he pushed it into Eric's outstretched hand. Then his eyes went wide when he realized he was quickly becoming a human torch. What the hell? I'm on fire! With all the grace he could muster, Eric expertly tossed the giant acorn cap towards the head of the fiery plant, aiming to plug up the gaping jaws of death. It spun through the air like a frying pan, wobbling this way and that. It missed the mouth entirely and clocked the plant hard at the base of the bulb. The effect was instantaneous as the plant went limp. Apparently unconscious, the vines went slack and they fell from its blazing grasp. Eric clenched his eyes shut, unwilling to watch what was coming next as they fell through the air like flaming torpedoes. Somewhere off to his right, he heard Attila's flailing and screeching while Brig was shouting utterances of insults and profanities just behind him. There was a tremendous noise, and suddenly water began to fill up around them. Eric opened his eyes to a blurred vision of a bed of plants drifting lazily in the current of murky green water. The way they swayed with the current was so surreal. It was almost like a dream. And then, just as quickly as it had happened, Eric was slapped away from the serene scene and into one of whitewater rapids slicing against razor-sharp rocks. He tried desperately to grab a hold of something, but the rocks were slick with foam and the rush of water too strong. He was forced down again and again by the undertow. His fingers dug desperately in the sand and mud, trying to keep from being swept away by the current, but they couldn't hold, and he suddenly felt his back slam into something hard. He struggled to get away, but at the feeling of fabric tearing, he realized he was snagged by his coat. It held fast, and he was trapped below the surface. Suddenly, the thing that had him snared tightened its grip around the fabric, pulled it tight and began to haul him up to the surface with incredible force. His lungs heaved with gratitude, and he turned, expecting to see his brother. Brig had a firm grip on a large, low-hanging branch and was holding Eric with the other. Attila had latched himself to his friend around the middle. I <laughs> hate water, Attila choked between breaths. Crack! The three of them looked up in dismay. The branch they were attached to gave an ominous tremble. While it was quite large and sturdy, the branch wouldn't be able to hold all three of them against the rushing current for long. It shuddered again as another splintering crack sounded. Branch! Bad! No hold! Briggs shouted, securing his grip around Eric's coat. I'll save us! Attila was now attempting to scale Briggs' body, straining to grab a hold of a stronger portion of the tree. In his haste to escape, he jammed the toe of his boot into his friend's side, which caused Brig to recoil. Great, Eric thought, his mood soured again. They were going to drown in an unknown realm in some backwoods river with zero chance of being found. 
Somehow, this was all his brother's fault. Or at least his fault for wandering off and not sticking around to help. Their lifeline had finally had enough. The current of the rushing river, combined with their weight, caused the branch to snap at last, and they were plunged back into the depths. They rolled and pitched in the waves. Rocks cut at them as the branches above taunted them as they hurtled downriver. Attila was screaming every time he resurfaced, and certainly didn't silence himself as they were unceremoniously shot over a small waterfall. The screaming only stopped when they were dropped into a relatively calm portion of the river, and their abused bodies drifted slowly towards the riverbank. Atop the noises of Attila moaning, there was a distinct sound of human-like chatter, complete with little whoops and hollers of delight. What's that? What's going on? Attila cried out, splashing about as he tried to turn himself around to face the commotion. It looks like... Eric started before Briggs' limp body smacked into him, forcing him under. He re-emerged, coughing out a lungful of air. Civilization? Attila began to frantically wave his hands above his head. Hey! Hey, help us! A series of fishing nets sailed through the air and tangled themselves around the three waterlogged travelers, hauling them roughly onto the shore. From beneath Briggs' unconscious bulk, Eric could see a tribe of tiny, hairy humanoids with large wooden masks hopping around excitedly. Attila sat up in his net and addressed one of the pygmies. We come in peace, he said, unable to hide the panic in his voice as he raised his hands. The pygmy closest, and by far the hairiest, lifted a knobby wooden stick and whipped it hard across Attila's head, knocking him out cold. Eric sighed and slumped back into the wet mud, pretending to be unconscious himself. Of Monsters and Mushrooms, an ongoing series by Leslie Heron, is a crossover fanfiction mixing her own characters and settings with a few of those created by author J.D. Wiley. She writes for the fun of devising new ways of messing with her characters and seeing just how much trouble they can get into. Banana Production Hello, kids. Tourniquet Chainbender Manhattan. I'm here with a very important massage. <laughs> Manhattan. A very important message. Stump, glass, hammer. Don't do drugs. Glue dot control. Stay in school. Calm bender, knock back man cower. And never eat strange mushrooms. Cow Friedman. My name's Brig. Slack number route fun march. And Attila is my hero. Paper. Seriously, he's just awesome. Echo front can. And way more handsome than me. Hat rack. Ah, let go. Crowbar. <laughs> Stay in school. Be safe. Attila's great. Bye. Swizzle stick.